Are you with me? How is it that Abraham believed in me? And you who claim to be the children of Abraham don't believe in me. So notice what Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 44. John chapter 8 and verse 44. You know Jesus, you, we usually think of Jesus as loving and kind and merciful, and He was all of that. But Jesus was never politically correct. He told things the way they were. With love, yes, but straightforward. Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. He's speaking to these people. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. And by the way, when Jesus pronounced his woes upon the scribes and the Pharisees, in Matthew chapter 23, we find these words in the woes on the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus called them serpents, brood of vipers. I mean, who, who is the great serpent? The devil. So if they were serpents, where were they born from? They were born from Satan, that's right. Who wanted to see Jesus dead? Satan. They wanted to see Jesus dead. So who's the spirit of who were they reflecting? The spirit of their father. That's right. Now notice this. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Where were they going to end up? In hell, according to this. When? At the very moment they died, they were going to go directly to hell. Of course not. We've already noticed Jesus is saying, serpents, brutal vipers, because you did not believe in Jesus, even though he resurrected a man called Lazarus, you are going to end up where? You're going to end up in the fires of hell. But he's not saying at the moment of death, he's speaking about the end of the age. By the way, if you go with me to Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, it speaks about what's going to happen at the end of the age. Do you notice in this parable that there's a reversal of roles? Where does the rich man end up? The one who claimed to be the son of Abraham, the one who had enjoyed all of the privileges and the covenants and the temple and the blessings of God, where did he end up? In hell. Where did the poor old Gentile, Lazarus, who, you know, was cast aside, ate the crumbs that fell, the crumbs of bread, of spiritual truth that fell from the table of the rich man? Where did he end up? He ended up in the bosom of Abraham. There was a reversal of roles. Now notice what Jesus says in Matthew 8, verses 11 and 12. And I say to you that many will come from east and west. Who do you think these are that will come from east and west? They are the Gentiles. You say, how do we know that? Because immediately before this, Jesus has healed the servant of a centurion, a Roman centurion. And Jesus says, I haven't found so much faith like this in Israel. Because, because the centurion says, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. I believe you're the Messiah. Just say, just say it, and it'll happen. Jesus says, I haven't found faith like this in Israel. And then he says, and I say to you that many, that is Gentiles, like the centurion, many will come from east and west, and notice this, and sit down with Abraham. Who are the ones who are going to sit down with Abraham? The Jews or the Gentiles? Hmm, the Gentiles who accepted Jesus. By the way, also the Jews who accepted Jesus. I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where? In the kingdom of heaven. Now notice, but the sons of the kingdom, who are the sons of the kingdom? Those who descended from Abraham according to the flesh, but were not spiritually children of the Lord. But the sons of the kingdom, notice, will be cast out into outer darkness. 
there will be weeping and what? And gnashing of teeth. When does the weeping and gnashing of teeth take place? It takes place immediately when they were going to die, right? No. It's when the righteous sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom. Then is the wailing of gnashing of teeth. But listen, listen what I'm going to say. Many Christians say, they actually add a word here where it says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They say there will be eternal weeping and gnashing of teeth. The fact is that the word eternal is not there. Is there going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the wicked go into the fires and are suffering separated from God? Yes, but it does not say everlasting weeping and gnashing of teeth. And by the way, this takes place at the end of the age. The crying out of the rich man does not take place immediately after his death. It takes place at the end of the age, according to this verse. Let's compare another one. Luke 13 and verse 28. Luke 13 and verse 28. This is a parallel passage to the one that we read from Matthew 8, 11, and 12. It says there, Jesus is speaking, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves, what? Yourselves thrust out. When is it that the wicked are going to be thrust out? When is it that the righteous are going to sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom at God's table? It is going to be at the end of the age, not at the moment of death. One final point that I would like to make is this. This uh, punishment of fire that is spoken of in the parable actually was fulfilled literally with the Jewish nation in the year 70. Do you know what happened in the year 70? In the year 70, the Roman legions came to the city of Jerusalem. They surrounded it. And there was a siege actually that lasted from uh, the year 68 till the year 70. It was a long siege because those inside the city did not want to give up. But eventually, the Romans were able to break through the barriers. They entered the city and they burnt the city and they burnt the temple all the way to the ground. In other words, just like the parable says, Jerusalem was destroyed by fire.